Blacksburg Motor Company, also known as the Doc Roberts Building, has been a cornerstone of Blacksburg since 1924. Located in the 400 block of South Main Street on the southwest corner of the Clay Street and Main Street intersection, the building is notable for its architectural significance, its connection to the history of the automobile in Blacksburg, and its relation to the Hevner family of Montgomery County. The early history of the motor company began when Robert Hevener and his brother Mason Hevener joined to finance Blacksburg Motor Company and Blacksburg Hardware. Mason Hevener became the dealer of the hardware and my father-in-law Robert C. Hevener became president and dealer of the Blacksburg Motor Company Chevrolet. It started off as a filling station and from that the brothers Mason and Robert Hevener began doing repair work and for a while ran a taxi service. The Art Deco style building is a classic example of an automobile oriented commercial facility. The majority of the building is in its original form with very few alterations. It features terrazzo floors, arched woodwork, tin ceilings, and 11,000 square feet of space. The building burned in the 30s and it had to be rebuilt and in the 50s the section was added to it on the left side when you're standing on Main Street with your back to Main Street facing the building and that then became the full scope of the building. That was a gas station out front and Alan Havner always worked the front parts and took care of the gas and and then there was Mason Havner that delivered gas down to Grattan Olingers and Pride's Forks and over to a place in Newport. It was kind of a distributing place here for the gas. Well, when my father-in-law made his nephew the dealer, David Hebner kept the dealership for a few years. Then he decided to go into hardware business himself and he sold his franchise to Ed Fast. And David had changed the name from Blacksburg Motor Company to Heavener Motor Company. And of course, Ed Fast had the Fast Chevrolet business. And then when Ed Fast gave up his franchise, the Doc Roberts people who were working at the time across the street, they rented the premises to become the Goodyear dealer at Blacksburg Motor Company. The building's construction in 1924 reflected significant changes not only for Blacksburg residents but for the nation as a whole. Between 1914 and 1920, automobile ownership rose dramatically with one in 14 Americans owning a car by the end of this period. Car owners were mostly middle class, white men who lived in the suburbs, yet the resale market that grew in the 1920s and 1930s made cars more affordable for urban laborers and minorities. Back at that time, you could almost count the names of families who owned cars. Always the doctor and the preacher and leading businessmen would be the first people who owned cars. Tourism by automobile also grew considerably during this period. Cars were heralded for giving citizens the ability to escape the pressures of the city and enter the democratic, regenerative, unifying space of the open road. Blacksburg was also touched by this national tourism trend. An October 16, 1924 article announcing the construction of the Blacksburg Motor Company noted, a very unique feature as well as a serviceable one to tourists is a ladies restroom which will comprise a portion of the building. My father-in-law had in the building of the building put in a ladies restroom which was unusual for the times and whenever customers came in he made sure that each customer was, was taken care of properly so that they would want to come back. Usually you'd talk with the customers which back then they could come back in the shop where you were working and it wasn't no restriction on it like it is today and you know a lot of them would come back and watch you work on their vehicle. 
And as subdivisions began to rise in Blacksburg, so did the need for automobiles. Things began changing a great deal under Marshall Hahn, but even before that, subdivisions were beginning to grow up. My father-in-law was a member of a small group, Floyd Plank and Dr. Hatcher, who was head of the math department, who developed a farm that became McBride Village. Airport Acres was already developed when I came as a student. Mr. Pandapas had developed it almost as part of the war effort to give people a chance to live. Preston and Draper had become the first subdivision of Blacksburg, and that at that time was out of town. Today it's just across the street from the library and in a stone's throw of City Hall. After that, the subdivision known as Blackwood, adjacent to Country Club Drive, and the subdivisions that uh, grew up all over Blacksburg began at that time, and people found places to live, and students began moving out into town in areas that they'd not lived in before. When I came here, all the students lived in the dormitories. You had more people coming into Blacksburg and with the cars and they would come in and well they had a lot of used cars they would buy and plus a new car. The Blacksburg Motor Company was a part of the history of numerous individuals and organizations in Blacksburg. The Volunteer Rescue Squad, originally formed in 1950, purchased its first vehicle, a Chevrolet panel truck from the Blacksburg Motor Company for $1,740. Similarly, Blacksburg's Volunteer Fire Department, formed in 1925, housed its fire trucks at the Motor Company in its early years. As luck would have it, at the time of the 1933 fire, the department's fire truck was stored on the premises. Other local organizations also benefited from the generosity of the Blacksburg Motor Company. I worked closely with Paul Deering where I was president of the YMCA, the student Y president. And Mr. Deering regularly gave money for us to make trips whenever we would have Y trips that we needed money for. And Mr. Deering would always make sure that we either went by to thank him or drop him a note of appreciation for his supporting our activities. Also, he let us house the YMCA car in the basement of his dealership building. In addition to its connection to automobile travel in Blacksburg, the Blacksburg Motor Company is also significant for its connection to the Hevner family of Montgomery County. Robert and Mason operated a garage in Blacksburg before building the Blacksburg Motor Company in 1924. Robert was a personable business owner who dressed sharply and valued customer service. His integrity and generosity brought customers back again and again. Their customers were very loyal. My father-in-law tried to make sure that every customer was a satisfied customer, and they always came back to deal with him. Not only did they take care of their customers, the Hebner family was good to their employees by offering training and benefits. There was a lot of changes in the automobile. They sent me to school when to work on automatic transmissions, and then they came out with an alternator to take care of the generator, and I had to go to school for the alternator, and then air conditioning started to come in the automobiles, so they sent me to school to learn the trade of repairing and, and uh, installing air conditioners. Of course, the motor company was good to me. They would give us a week vacation with pay and a, a week of Christmas pay. So that really helped out back then when, you know, a week's pay for Christmas while you're there, you could buy your Christmas, so. In addition to his work with Robert at the Blacksburg Motor Company, Mason owned and operated Blacksburg Hardware in downtown Blacksburg. His nephew, David Curtis, later took over operation of the Blacksburg Motor Company which later became Hevner Chevrolet in 1966. David purchased the business in 1970 and sold it in 1976, not long before the Doc Roberts Tire Company occupied the space. 
Robert Hevner's extensive contributions to the town make the rehabilitation of the Blacksburg Motor Company for civic use all the more appropriate. But let me point out to you that Robert Hevner was a lot more than simply the Chevrolet, Chevrolet dealer. He was on the town council of Blacksburg. He was a charter member of the Blacksburg Christiansburg Virginia Tech Water Authority and Sanitation Authority. He was a, a director for a long period of time for the National Bank of Blacksburg. He was a don donor to all the charities in the area and very much felt himself a part of all the activities in the area. The shell of the building will remain as is. Uh, the original structure is remarkably intact as are the architectural features inside. The, the automobile showroom area still has the original pressed tin ceilings, the original sales offices, arched doors and woodwork and some of the flooring and all of that will be restored and maintained in its current condition. The back of the building in the interior uh, was more the, the maintenance area, so it's a shell. Um, and that will be, become the individual office areas. The front of the area will be largely the public meeting spaces and the reception spaces. So that also at, when the building is complete and the renovation is done, um, visitors will be able to see what it was and what it still is as far as the uh, historic elements of it. We, the partners of owners, were really pleased that the building is to be kept and we felt that the sacrifice and price that we might have gotten from an alternate buyer was well worth our feeling a part of what will take place there in the future. Mm -hmm.